Hey, what's up everybody? It's Richard here from Crash Course Hobbies. Welcome to 2024. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about my favorite hobby products that I simply can't live without. Now, the first one I've talked to you about before, but I love these and I guarantee a lot of you are not using them, but I highly recommend you do. And it's Swedish paper towels. Instead of using regular paper towels, these little cellulose pads are amazing. One, they're reusable and washable, so you don't have to use a ton of paper towels. Two, they don't get as fibrous and so like you know paper towels tend to kind of break down after a little bit and they'll get the little fibers stuck on your brush and they get in your wet palette your paints and stuck to your models and stuff like that definitely don't notice it with these hyper absorbent kind of swedish paper towel things i do recommend that you pre-wet them with like a squirt bottle or something get them about you know half the way wet and they'll still wick moisture off your brush just fine and i find that i can buy like a 10 pack and i cut them up into these little small squares and one of these squares will last me several days of painting depending on like kind of how gross I make it and you can wash them if you want to uh, I usually just throw them away because you'll get like 50 of these little squares out of a 10 pack uh, but either way they last a very very long time compared to paper towels and I find the experience is loads better I definitely recommend you guys try it out the next one is a super glue activator what this does is it makes your super glue dry pretty much instantly and it is a life changer especially if you're gluing together 3d prints which pretty infamously don't go together well with super glue you just put a whole bunch of it on there spray this and literally within two seconds it will be super strong and cured it's also really good for like fiddly things like i used it to re-glue on a staff on one of my storm casts that broke off and instead of sitting there and holding the pieces together for like two minutes i just put a little drop on there squirt the spray of the activator on there and then immediately cover it up and you're good to go just be careful because i did get a bunch of this on my finger the other day when i was building a big cosplay chain sword and got the spray on it and now i've got a huge blister on my finger because i got a chemical burn so definitely be careful with this stuff but it will save you a ton of time and now that i've been using it i really can't imagine life without it another thing i recommend picking up are some glaze mediums i've got some here from vallejo i've also got this big bottle you can get from monument hobbies and really it doesn't even really matter that much which one you go with i'm sure you know if you use a lot of vallejo paints maybe you want to go with the vallejo one or vice versa for pro acryl or what have you but you know for the longest time i was mixing my glazes with just water and you can definitely do that but especially with the lighter colors that tend to kind of break down a little bit easier throwing in some glaze medium instead man it is a huge game changer seriously on my custodies when i was changing to do the the pink and i was glazing it on there on the purple capes for the longest time i was using the uh, purple and the water and then i found some glaze medium actually at hobby lobby and i was like i'm gonna give that a shot and it seriously blew my mind so if you haven't tried using glaze medium yet you can pick up a small bottle for a couple of bucks I think you can pick up one of these giant ones from Monument Hobbies for like, I think it's like nine or 10 bucks, something like that. But I highly recommend you do so because especially on those lighter colors, it will make glazing seriously so much better. <laughs> Another thing I recommend you pick up is any kind of like blue tack or um, this kind of like museum wax or this brand here, Goobs talked about on the Paint Bravely podcast was called Tack It. And you can get a whole bunch of this on Amazon for like 12 bucks. And it is super nice for sticking minis to bases without gluing them down, or if you wanna build stuff in sub-assemblies and stick it together and not have to worry about it falling off. Um, you can also use it for masking, for airbrushing, and it's pretty much infinitely reusable. Even if you get paint on it, I usually will just squish it back up and mix it and the paint just kind of gets absorbed in there and you can keep on going. Um, but I always have a whole bunch of this in one of my drawers and I literally use it every day when I'm painting. And for the very minimal investment, it's one of those things that I recommend to pretty much all new painters as an essential item that you should have in your desk. Now look, I know a lot of us use cheap paint brushes and I definitely have gotten a lot of miles out of some very cheap budget brushes on Amazon. But once you start getting a little bit better, you start working your way up to natural hair brushes, you're definitely gonna to wanna to keep them nice. And with proper care, you can keep a sable hair brush or even a nicer synthetic brush, heck, even your cheap brushes for that matter, you can make a brush last a very long time, much longer than you think, especially for somebody that's newer to the hobby and is used to kind of 
using a brush once and throwing it away, you know, when you're using your Crayola watercolors and stuff like that. But if you take good care of your brushes, you can have them last you for seriously like months, a very long time. So I recommend you pick up some brush cleaner and you can get this from, again, I've got the Drunken Brush Soap from Monument Hobbies, also kind of the classic Masters brush soap is very good. You can get these on Amazon as well for a couple of bucks and just regularly cleaning your brushes with brush soap and then leaving a little bit in there to condition the bristles as well, seriously is something that you really shouldn't overlook because if you're spending 10, 20 bucks on a brush, you really don't wanna be doing that you know, every couple of weeks or a couple of months or whatever it might be. Um, so pick up some of this brush soap for you know, 10 bucks or so and save money. Don't waste your brushes by treating them like crap and they will treat you well and last a long time. Another indispensable item that I use literally every day at my desk are little fidget poppers. And these, I know they've been kind of like popping up in popularity around YouTube uh, after Uncle Adam's video talking about them. I've got four young kids, so these are literally all over my house. And when I saw him do that video, I was like, why haven't I thought of this before? I literally have these all over my house and I'd been using just the little plastic well palettes and the paint would dry in there and you're scraping it out with your fingernail and it doesn't come off. So these for using speed paints, um, for using contrast or metallics, anything that you wanna use a well palette for. These little fidget poppers are amazing. I know lots of other people have talked about it, but for the purposes of keeping it legit with what I use every day on my desk, I use these all the time. I mean, you can see how dirty all these are and you can just pop it right out and you're good to go. And so I'm always using contrast paints or metallics or anything. Uh, and just throw them in the well palettes and it's awesome. They work great. Now, speaking of the well palettes, one thing that I find that I use with them all the time is flow improver. I recommend using the Vallejo airbrush flow improver. Um, but the reason that I use this is specifically with um, contrast paints and with metallics especially. What Flow Improver does versus thinner is Flow Improver is a drying retardant, so it'll make it so that it takes longer for the paints to dry out. And I find that using metallics, since I don't wanna put them on my wet palette, um, they tend to dry out and be difficult to use after just a few minutes. And so by just putting a single drop of Flow Improver in with you know four or five drops of whatever metallic paint I'm using, I have that issue way less. And so you tend to get less texture when you're painting with your metallics and just running into that chunkiness and having to start a new well in the palette uh, and just makes it so much better. And then the same thing with contrast paints, speed paints, things like that. I'll usually put a drop of Flow Improver in with every four or five, uh, just because I find that it helps it run into the recesses and perform like contrast paint should, just a little bit better and give you a little bit more working time. So again, for a couple of bucks for a bottle, I find that I'm literally reaching for it every single day and I get a lot of use out of it. Now, I know these things are stupid and I've seen people make fun of them all the time and I was very much in the same boat until I backed Green Stuff World's uh, Max Darth Kickstarter for the blackest black paint and I ended up getting one of these little toilet flushers as uh, an item included in the Kickstarter. But what I've found is that these are actually really good for cleaning your brushes. Now, can you absolutely just use two different bowls of water, one for kind of getting the gross stuff and one for kind of cleaning them at the end? Yes. But I find that I'm much more likely to clean my brushes at the end of a painting session if I have a solution right there on my desk to make cleaning very easy. And being able to kind of lather up my brush, mix it into the little flusher, and then get clean water immediately available to me when washing my brushes, I found that it is just, I mean, it's changed the game for me. I used to clean my brushes realistically like once a week, if that, and now I'm finding I clean them every day after I paint because it's just really easy to just use that. And so you, I know you can pick them up like a two pack of these little flushers on Amazon. I wouldn't even buy the Green Stuff World brand because it's literally just a rebranded like Chinese product, um, but you can still pick these up and I'll link those for you as well. But you know, it's not an essential item, but I do use it all the time way more than I thought I would. And for a couple of bucks, it was a quality of life thing for me and it might be for you. Another thing I reach for pretty much every hour while I'm painting is one of these little tattoo spray bottles. I use it for refilling my wet palette. I use it for cleaning out my airbrush. I've got several of these around. And for me in my house, both of the bathrooms uh, upstairs where my office is are a pretty good deal away. So um, just having a source of water that's close where I don't have to get up all the time is also super helpful. And you can pick up like a four pack of these on Amazon for like, 
I don't know, again, 10, $15, something like that. Um, but I've actually worn a couple of these out and again, it's another thing that I reach for every single day. So if you don't have them, I would recommend picking some up. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and maybe found an item that you haven't seen before or hadn't thought about using before. I know a lot of these are fairly common, but for me personally, these are the items that I find I get the most use of out of my desk every single day. And with that, guys, I'm going to be putting out lots more videos, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. You know what to do to support your favorite channels. I hope you do that for me as well. As always, y'all, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.